You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello, and welcome to episode 68 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. So what's going on, Brandon? Uh, just sitting here enjoying some lovely candy corn for the month of October. Are you really enjoying it? I had some. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm doing sugar for a week. It's about a, been about a week and a half. Are you binging? Until the end of my vacation. Vacation? He's going up to the cabin next week. Oh, okay. Wednesday. <clears throat> but when I say binging, I mean, like, are you just, like, going, like, everything you eat is sugar, basically? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's, like, double fisting Chipotle burritos. <laughs> but I have been at Taco Bell three times this weekend. It's hack a time. <laughs> this weekend? <laughs> What'd you have? Uh, yesterday I had the... Big box. They have a cheesy gordita crunch Dorito big box. Okay. I got that. Okay. Today for lunch, I got triple layer nachos and beef, beefy mini quesadilla, uh, cheesy bean and rice burrito, and outside of Baja sauce. Baja sauce, yes. Yeah. That's my favorite thing is the Baja steak gordita. That's my favorite thing on that menu. Yeah. The, I love all their sauces. Whenever I go there, I get a side of either <clears throat> that creamy chipotle or creamy jalapeno. Very nice. Have you tried the uh, the jalapeno or jalapeno burger? From no, I should get one of those uh, on the way home. On the I, way home, only after nine o'clock. I should. I, sh- I should bring one home to Jamila and have her eat it with me. Ooh. You should. So good, <laughs> man. I had that though, and the next two two days later, after our camping trip, my ass was on fire. <laughs> it was like lava coming out. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't experience that, Nick? <clears throat> no, I was I was cool. I got yeah. lucky, I guess. Quote time? Sure. So this quote comes, it's from a movie. I'm going to tell you guys that. And it takes place right before the climax of the movie. It's showtime. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. That's heck of tight when he gets Lydia to say his name three times to save the... The deeds? Yeah, Beetlejuice is heck of tight. They're not the deeds, are they? Because Lydia is the deed. Oh, okay. They adopted her? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, Ortho, or Otho's exercising them, going to kill them, and then Beetlejuice comes and saves the day. And then that bitch Barbara had to ride on a sandworm and try to kill him, but she failed. Because there's going to be a second Beetlejuice. Yeah, they tried to shrink his head at the end, but... I guess that curse didn't last forever. But you know what curse does last forever? <clears throat> the eggplant curse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great segue into a game of the week. <laughs> nice. I've been playing Kid Icarus. I've been playing that for a couple hours, and... That game is fun and frustrating, but <laughs> more on the fun side, <clears throat> because I got reached level 1-4 finally, and I found out that the eggplant wizards are assholes. <laughs> the eggplant they, wizards. They blow, throw an eggplant at, at Pit, and if it hits him, he turns into an eggplant with legs, and there's no way to lift the curse except going to the doctor, and she heals you. It's bullshit. Now, you only get... Turn into an eggplant if you get hit by the eggplants. If you touch them, do you turn into eggplants? I have an exper- I don't know yet. But I'm, you can see all those recordings on YouTube. I'm posting my progress on uh, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia at YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe to that. Uh, I'll have another video up hopefully tomorrow. But meaning, a, <laughs> meaning Monday. <laughs> yeah. Did you get past the Cerberus or whatever? The, no. No. I... Um, I only play what I record, so I got to the Cerberus as an eggplant and died. <laughs> the helpers didn't help you too much. They got swatted away like flies. There's a, like a little percentage meter of it, of the boss's health, and I think it was at like 95% <laughs> when, he, when he died. So they took down 5% of his health. Is that all the hammers are good for us to rescue those helper guys? Mm-hmm. It's funny. I've been playing a game. <clears throat> what game? 
The Amazing Spider-Man 2. How is it? It's pretty good. Right now, I'm chasing down a character who kills people. Mm -hmm. And with the victim's blood, he writes his initials on the wall, CK. Cletus Cassidy. Oh, that's heck of time. Yeah. And they come to find out the media is calling him the Carnage Killer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Foreshadowing. Yeah, I can't wait to actually meet up with this guy and see if he turns into a symbiote. Have you even seen Venom, though? No, I haven't. Uh, I just got a note from Craven the Hunter saying that he'll help me. And I ran into Jamie Foxx's character who before he was Electro. Oh, yeah. And I ran into the Shocker. Um, so maybe you'll capture Cletus and send him to prison and then Venom will come. That'd be tight. And then Carnage will come out. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I'm still playing Last of Us. I played it for a few hours this week. I got to this part where, um, Ellie, Ellie's the name of the girl, right? He throws her up out of an elevator shaft and then the elevator falls down and you're in like this basement area that's flooded out. And in order to get out of there, you have to start a generator to turn the power back on so you can use a card key to unlock one of the doors. <clears throat> but once you start the generator up, the all the zombies, well, they're not really zombies, but the infected uh, are, uh, they, they follow it. They, they basically are attracted to sound. And I was introduced to these guys that like shoot spores at you and Bloaters. shit. Bloaters. Bloaters. <laughs> oh, wow. I ran into one of them in the, in the high school gym, but... The bloaters in this area, I don't think, are intended to be killed. I think you're basically <laughs> just there so that you can evade them. Because <clears throat> it's such a small quarters, and you have so so uh, such a small amount of am ammunition that you really couldn't take on more than one at a time. And I don't think you can shiv them like you can with the, the clickers because mm -hmm. they're just they're just right on you. So on, on that part, I try. I didn't know that I was just supposed to evade them, so I actually did try to fight one or two of them. Fuck this, man. <laughs> they're they're vicious. Like if you shoot them with a shotgun, they just keep coming at you. And once they get a hold of you, they like grab the the top and bottom of your face and just rip your face off. It's fucking. Yeah, it's they fucking pull sick. a Godzilla on you. Yeah, pretty much. Time. So that's the, that's about when I stopped last night. And uh, yeah, I think I'm like halfway through the game. <laughs> Not even, I don't think. Yeah, a it, little. It says forty five percent. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So go ahead and continue to like us on Facebook. Email us if you have any suggestions or if you want to shout out at treasure hunting for nostalgia at gmail dot com. I got, speaking of email, I got an we got an email from uh you mean, you mean we get lots of emails. You just wanted to talk about this one. Right, right, right. From who <laughs> who do we get an email from? Maddie G. <laughs> <laughs> he suggested we have Tim back on to talk. <laughs> To talk about Xbox games, he said that we should make a Timmy's Xbox Hour, <laughs> and he could come on and talk about the Xbox games he's been playing. <laughs> we all know how much we love the Xbox. That's pretty funny. Uh, and go ahead and keep subscribing to us on YouTube. We're going to get uh, more videos up there for you guys to watch. Hope you're enjoying those. And uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter is NAS Hunter. Instagram is Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. We've got a pretty cool top five for you this week. Um, tomorrow's Columbus Day. And <laughs> having uh, Nick and myself off, we wanted to appreciate Christopher Columbus and all he did for our country. And so we're going to go for top five vessels in video games. Did you actually make that connection when we were discussing it? Like, did you actually say, let's do vessels in honor of Christopher Columbus? Yes. I didn't I didn't catch that. <laughs> I was like, where did you get vessels from? That's pretty funny. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and roll to see who goes first. Brandon gets nine, I get three, and Nick gets three as well. So we'll start off with Brandon. Number five on my list comes from an SNES game called Secret of Mana. And the vessel I'm talking about is Flamey, or Flammy, the dragon. In terms of the story, the Flammies were created by the moon gods and are part of an endless cycle of destruction and rebirth. 
as a stronger version of the Flammies known as Mana Beasts or God Beasts. Uh, you get this guy pretty late in the game. Uh, once you get the Flammy drum, you could call, up, call upon him and ride anywhere you want. And that's why he's my number five, because you get to ride a dragon. <laughs> my number five is going to be from Breath of Fire 2. Breath of Fire 2 is an awesome Super Nintendo game where you can build a town and decide how it looks and what shops are in it. There are many vessels you obtain. You get a whale. You get Nina's sister who sacrifices herself. Her name's Mina to become a giant bird for you to fly on. And at some point you fight an old man surrounded by machinery. If you kill the machinery surrounding the old man, you find out that he is your father and his name is Ganner. He can't fight or really live or do anything else really because he's been surrounded for machines for so long, but he offers to connect himself to your town and he could make it fly anywhere you like. So I'm going to go with Ganner as my number five. I forgot about that. He could turn your whole town into a floating island and you could move it wherever you like. That's tight. Number five from my list is also from an SNES game. It's the Falcon from Final Fantasy VI. The Falcon originally belonged to Setzer's girlfriend, Daryl. Setzer was having a friendly airship race using his ship, the Blackjack, against Daryl when Daryl had an accident and died, destroying the ship in the process. Setzer repaired the Falcon but buried it in Daryl's tomb, and after the end of the world, when all the, the espers fuck shit up, uh, Setzer is convinced by Celeste to recover the Falcon, which is used to gather a party to attack Kefka at his tower. The Falcon is one of two airships in Final Fantasy VI. Uh, the Falcon was the faster ship, but because it was piloted by a woman, it crashed. <laughs> it is equipped with a slave who undresses members of the party. <laughs> There's also a two-tiered lounge area below the deck where members of the party can chill. So that's my number five is the Falcon. That was my number four. I just wanted to uh, jump in and say uh, this game, I've said it before, it's a very emotional game. Halfway through the game, you lose all your party members. And after you, like Nick said, you find Setzer uh, and recover it, you finally get some hope that you get to get everyone and go fight Kefka. So... I did put that on my list as well. Number four on my list is the SSN from Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. The SSN is a well-known luxury cruise liner which sells the world, stopping annually in Vermilion City, Kanto. To get the SSN, you need to obtain an SSN ticket by helping out this guy named Bill, who dresses up like Pokemon. The ship contains many Pokemon trainers, including many gentlemen and sailors. But the prize of the SSN comes when you help their sea captain, who is sick. Once you rub him on his back, he throws up in a bucket and gives you the hidden machine cut, so your Pokemon can learn cut to cut down trees. And you don't actually obtain the SSN, you just ride on it for a little bit, right? Well, yeah, it's docked on in Vermilion City, and then when you get off after getting cut, it just leaves. Uh, my number four was Falcon. Right. My number four comes from a NES game named Super Mario Brothers 3. It's the airships that Bowser and his Koopalings fly around in. There uh, are common enemies on the, each of the airships. There's cannons, bullet bills, the bombs, and those damn moles that throw wrenches at you. You can jump on their heads. They just come right back. That's why they piss me off so much. But in the final world of Mario Brothers 3, there's one airship on the path to Bowser that is hecka hard. If you attempt to conquer it without assistance, the amount of ball tension that you'll experience <laughs> is insane. I've only been able to defeat it with a P-Wing. Maybe in my older age I might be wise enough to conquer it but still pretty difficult so that's my number four is the airships from uh, Mario Brothers 3 number three on my list is the flute also known as the ocarina in A Link to the Past it once belonged to a young boy who set out in search of the golden power and never returned when Link talks to the boy in the dark world he gives the young hero a shovel and asks him to find his flute. Link, Link finds the instrument buried in the haunted grove in the light world and plays the flute one last time for the boy, who is soothed by the music and then permanently turned into tree. <laughs> 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 
when Link brings the flute to the flute boy's father, the man understands what has happened to his son. He's like, oh, man, he must have got turned into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, so he's like, well, my son can't do anything with it now that he's made out of wood, so why don't you keep it? <clears throat> he then tells Link to play the flute in front of the weathercock in the center of Kakariko Village. Soon after Link uh, does this, the flute boy's pet bird breaks out of the weathercock and flies off. Then Link is able to use the weathercock bird to fly to one of eight locations. Weathercock. <laughs> he can fly to Death Mountain, the front of the witch's hut, Kakariko Village, in front of the weathercock statue, Link's house, south of the Eastern Palace, Desert of Mystery, the Great Swamp, Link Hylia, and then on the eastern side of Death Mountain on top of the rock that mirrors Turtle Rock. But that's only in the Game Boy Advance version. What? <laughs> what? What is a vessel to you? We had this discussion, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Anything that lets you travel long distances. So Superman's cape would be like a vessel. Actually, he doesn't. The cape doesn't allow him to fly. Superman would be. Superman himself is a vessel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I agree with your definition, but I like the pick because it's, it's a great game. Number three on my list is the Excellion from Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinner Scrolls. This ship reminds this ship's name sounds like Excelsior, which reminds me of the greatest romantic comedy to hit the silver screen. Can you guess what it is? Excelsior. Excelsior. I, I, I know it, but I can't think of it right now. It's Silver Linings Playbook. That's what I thought it was. That's so funny. Uh, Bradley Cooper's motto is Excelsior. And he, he actually gets sent to the Giants game with the Philadelphia Eagles, and they lose. And Jennifer Lawrence, the smart one, comes in and is like, You sent someone whose personal motto is Excelsior. Do you know what the Giants' motto is? It's Excelsior. And, and all the guys in there are like, Oh! Um, that movie's like a funny. It is. I love that movie a lot. Uh, and plus the ship could get you to the ancient cave. <laughs> Isn't there a bunch of upgrades that you do to it? Like, uh, what's that scientist name that upgrades it all the time? Lexus. Yeah. Yeah, he could make it fly, make turn into a submarine. It's a pretty nice vessel. I'm a little bit off the board with my number three. I actually went with a PC game. Sorry, guys. It's a game that I've actually played for many hours. Uh, it's called Civilization Three. I'm going to give a shout-out to the Galleon. The Galleon transports any four units across the sea. Your civilization scientists must have developed magnetism before you can begin producing the galleon. Prior to the galleon, all of the sea vessels have a good chance of sinking in the deep ocean, but the galleon has no chance of ever sinking and can be used to explore any area of the map that you'd like. So I had to give it a shout out just because the explorer in me really appreciates that it can tra traverse those deep ocean uh, passages. So that's my number three is the galleon from Civilization Three. Built in 2446, the SMG Ishimura was hailed as the savior of Earth and the colonies and a symbol of mankind's innovation. Do you know where the SMG Ishimura comes from? What game? Dead Space. Dead Space. She was created for mining and smelting entire planets and moons. She was also the first ship capable of the scan and catch technique for harvesting mineral-rich asteroids using huge gravity tethers. The Ishimura had the ability to lock onto asteroids and pull them into her massive collection base for smelting. Despite being designed primarily as a mining vessel, the Ishimura also functioned as a medical research vessel. She had a dedicated medical wing where extensive research into virology, toxins, and genetic was con conducted. This game is probably one of the scariest games I've ever played. And part one takes place on the Ishimura, and part two, you get to go back to it, and it's hecka scary. So that that game is really scary, and it's pretty fun, too. I, I actually thought it was going to be worse than it was, but I really enjoyed it. I love that game. I, uh, it reminds me of that movie, um, Event Horizon. Event Horizon, with all the huh. hellish creatures and everything. In space. And how it... the What's that? Ar the artifact? Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? How the it artifact. makes everyone hallucinate and turn into monsters and it's crazy so yeah i have to give it props to that that game it's a mind trip 
Yeah, when you find out you have to go back to the Isamur in part two, you're like, oh, shit's about to get real, and it does. It does. I bet it does. Number two on my list is going to be Flammy from Secret of Mana. This stupid-looking winged dragon... <laughs> it does look like a stupid. ...let's lets you explore the map of Secret of Mana. The only salvation, Flammy turns out to be the mana beast, and you must slay him at the end of the game with the mana sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw when I was doing my research online, someone said, my, This isn't Maddie, because Cassie doesn't play video games. My girlfriend won't beat Secret of Mana because you have to kill Flammy. <laughs> That's so lame. <laughs> <laughs> my turn? Yep. Alright, my number two uh, comes from, again, from Final Fantasy VI is the Blackjack. This ship belonged to Setzer and was destroyed by rabid espers during the end of the world sequence. As mentioned earlier, it was the slower of the two airships known in the world, but it has two things that the Falcon does not have. First, it has a healer and an item shop, and most importantly, a casino! Yeah, that's tight. The featured games are Roulette and Blackjack. Unfortunately, you can't play either of them, but had to give it some props because... Fucking vessel has a freaking casino in it. Yeah. It's so tight. So that's my number two is the blackjack. And that's the airship that comes in uh, kidnap Celeste during the opera scene. Yeah. And number one on my list, the lunar whale from Final Fantasy IV. In Japanese, it's called Yomedusin Lit. <laughs> <laughs> or the magic ship. Also known as Big Whale and the Magical Ship, it is the ultimate airship. It also has a fat cocoa bone in it that could store your eyes. Yes. <laughs> the Lunar Whale's sprite is about three or four times the size of all the other ships in the game, but it does move slower, which kind of sucks. Uh, Do you think it really moves slower, or does it just appear to move slower? It's I, so big. I, just, I think it moves slower. I'm not sure. Uh, due to the size of the ship, it cannot land in some places that the Falcon and the Enterprise can, and is unable to enter the crater into the underground. If the player attempts to land the airship and enter the crater, the airship will lower and then rise right back up into the air, showing you that it's too big to fit. (laughs) My number one is going to be the Epoch from Chrono Trigger. Ooh, I forgot about that one. Not only do you explore the map, but you could time travel with it. And that opens up many, many different side quests and secrets for you. So the Epoch is my number one. I wanted to put that on my list, but I haven't played through the game yet. So I, I didn't feel right putting that on there. My number one was also the Lunar Well from Final Fantasy IV. Just wanted to mention that not only is there a fat Kokobo, but there's also a fat Chocobo on there. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Some people just say it the retarded way. <laughs> Leave that in there. <laughs> Chocobo. Chocobo. Fools. Chocobo. Uh, and it also has um, beds where your party can rest as well, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, number one, Lunar Well from Final Fantasy IV. I'm sure that's where Riddy and Edge got a lot of their action on. <laughs> you know how long it takes to go to the moon? They were probably like up there for weeks just practicing their sex moves. Maybe they had to be in cryogenic freeze animation and they couldn't do anything. No, I think they actually got it on. <laughs> Honorable mentions? Uh, the Dragon Guard from Tales of Destiny. The ship made out of a dragon. Yeah. Um, the Gilded Lady from Step Brothers. <laughs> That's not a video game. No, it's not a video game. <laughs> I just thought it deserved mention. <laughs> and then I, I pulled with Brandon and I put Shy Guy as an honorable mention. <laughs> That's like a tight. <laughs> Yoshi? Yoshi, I put him as a dishonorable. <laughs> Even though he's not a vessel? Yep. But and, just as much a vessel as a freaking whistle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Rush. Yeah. Is that honorable or dishonorable? Honorable, of course. Nice. Want to play a quick game? That sounds heck of fun. Okay. So uh, Tim Wilson and I went and played disc golf earlier today. And on the way, he was telling me that um, 
before he goes to take his daughter to a movie, he goes on to IMDb, the internet movie database, to see uh, what the parental restrictions are and what uh, vile scenes might be contained in a movie. And I was thinking that would be kind of fun to read off these parental guides and see if they could guess what movie it's from. So I haven't done any research on this. I haven't checked to see what these say, but I thought I'd just read off a couple of the, these uh, parental guides from IMDb to see if you can get them. Because I read a few of them while we were there, while we were driving to the disc golf course, and I thought they were pretty funny. So let's see if I can find a couple good ones. <clears throat> let's see. All right, I'm just going to read off a few of the, the parental guides for this particular movie. References to pornography, but nothing explicit is shown. A dildo is briefly seen. A few condoms are shown floating in a toilet in a scene. A woman puts her hand on a man's clothed crotch. A man checks a woman's breasts for lumps. No nudity is shown. In a dreamy sequence, we see a couple having sex, with the camera rotating around them. Lots of skin is shown, including bare buttocks and breast, although there is not much detail. This scene lasts roughly 15 seconds. Any guesses? Fight Club. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> nice. I'll do a couple more. This one, I think, is more humorous because I read this earlier. I'm going to do my best to uh, not mention the, the actors' names. <laughs> there are more than 150 F-words, at least two F-words in every scene. There are endless crude and sexual jokes and references made throughout the film. <laughs> two women are seen kneeling in front of and behind this particular character, implying fellatio and analingus, which I didn't know was a word, by the way. Wow. <laughs> a woman's breast is visible. Prior to this, another woman states outright that she intends to have sex with this particular character before the party is over. This particular character... This is a separate uh, bullet. This particular character talks about how the kids at school used to hold him down and titty-fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> These characters lay together on a couch discussing different positions to sleep in to avoid sexual arousal. <laughs> dick to butt, butt to butt. They soon agree on all dicks up. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Let me read a couple more. Yeah. Uh, these characters have an extended argument over who can make the bigger ejaculate mass <laughs> while masturbating after this character finds the other character's semen in a porno magazine. This scene goes on for about three minutes and is meant to be over the top. <laughs> <laughs> An extended discussion plays out in which the male character discusses which of them is more likely to rape Emma Watson. <laughs> One particular character becomes the leader of a cannibal tribe and has another character <laughs> as a sex slave. The other character wears a thong and we see his bare butt as the, as the other character describes how easy it is <laughs> for him to have sex with him. <laughs> One character is raped by a demon. When showing the porno magazine, you can see explicit pictures of females, breasts shown, and vaginas clearly seen. <laughs> You know what it is, Brendan? This is the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a sip of my sippy? What it, was it? The Capri Sun? Yeah. Like Sarah. Would you like a sip? I'll do one more. Please hold me down. Titty fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last one. Several sex-related discussions, several with over-the-top explicit detail. A man holds up a picture of a spread vagina. A man and a woman talk about their sex life. A woman has sex with a dead body in the bathroom off screen. A man talks about jizz moppers. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know that's clerks. I'm clerks, sure. yeah. You can see your kidneys. <laughs> I thought that'd be pretty funny. That sounds. That's that's like a funny. I like that. This is the end one. Yeah. Channing Tate, yum. <laughs> Cool picks? I don't have cool picks. What? I don't. Blasphemy. Can't you just do it on the fly? We could try. You won't. You can't. 
Hmm. I wonder if you'll be able to look at the schedule for this week without seeing the scores. Because most, like, 85% of the games have already been played. I could do next week's. Oh, that's a good idea. Sure. What is it? Week 7 next week? Uh, I, I believe it would be 7. Yeah, that's right. All right. NFL Cool Picks Week 7. Uh, Jets and Patriots. Patriots. <laughs> Vikings and Bills. Vikings. Falcons and the Ravens. Baltimore, Maryland, Atlanta Falcon, Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> I'm going to do a uh, temperature on this one. <laughs> Atlanta is also known as Hot Atlanta in the hip hop R&B community. Baltimore's got those they got some good like seafood there. Oh, they've got the oh, I wish I was doing it based on food because Baltimore would totally win with the lobster rolls. But I'm doing weather-wise, but Baltimore is foggy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's that fisherman Gordon. Remember him? <laughs> yeah. He was from Maryland. So I'm, gonna go with, <laughs> I'm going with the Ravens. That's like a funny. Browns and Jaguars. <laughs> uh, I'm going stock here and going based purely on the helmet logo. Looking at the Browns, it's just a stupid orange helmet. <laughs> and the Jaguars have the fierce Jaguars, so I'm going with them. <laughs> <laughs> Panthers and Packers. I think we should put this one and lay it to rest. Panthers. Are they from North or South Carolina? North. Are they? I, yes. I thought they were from South. I, I think they must have wishy washed back and forth. Were they ever part of South yeah. Carolina? In the 80s. <laughs> Do you want an honest answer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for an honest answer. Then you might want to check with Nick. <laughs> no, they're, they've always been based in North Carolina. Why do they call themselves the Carolina then? That's a good question. I don't know. Why do New England call themselves New England Patriots? Exactly. <laughs> Even though, they're, as we learned, they are from Connecticut. Connecticut, uh, Fo Foxborough, Connecticut. Really? Yeah. I didn't know it was Connecticut. It's not Massachusetts? For real? No, that's it. I mean, Foxborough, <laughs> Massachusetts. Because <laughs> it's in the same town as, or same area as Boston. Right. It's just shady. <laughs> the Panthers, Carolina, they don't want to signify. You know what they're being? They're being unbiased. They're not saying if they're from the north or south because if there's another secession, the south from the north, the south will rise again. So they want to be on the lat on the they want to be on the fence. That's funny. So I'm going with the Packers, <laughs> Dolphins, and the Bears. Going with the Dolphins because Jeffrey's. <laughs> Saints and the Lions have to go with the Saints. Seahawks and Rams, that's an automatic win for the Seahawks. <laughs> Titans and the Redskins, as long as the Redskins have this racial bias name, I cannot pick them to win. So I'm going for the Titans. Chiefs and the Chargers, going with the Chiefs. Uh, Giants and Cowboys, of course the Cowboys. Cardinals and the Raiders. This one's a funny one. Did you <coughs> see what Joe Covarrubias posted? About the Raiders spitting, or the Raiders fans egging the, the Chargers <laughs> that, bus. That's heck of funny. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe even put SMH Raider fans shaking my head. <laughs> He's trying to use cool guy lingo. I think he qualifies as a cool guy now. Yeah, because he votes for the Chargers. Votes for the Chargers. <laughs> no, just because he's a cool guy. He, yeah. He has cool guy friends. He does. He's got bro friends. Yeah. They What do they call him? Brosifies? Bros, brosifs? I don't know. I, I guess I'm not cool enough oh, to know. Yeah. Uh, just despite him, I'm going with the Raiders. Wow. On this one. That's next week? Mm-hmm. Why would they egg their bus this week then? No, they raided. They egg the Chargers. Oh, I. But they're not playing. The Raiders and Chargers are not playing each other next week. Correct? They're playing the Cardinal. Cardinals. Gotcha. Okay. The Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Texans and Steelers. This was. Un this is an automatic lose for the Steelers. We know that. <laughs> and then the 49ers and the Broncos. Ooh. What do I want to go by? Out not the weather. I already did weather. I already did, kind of did fans. I did location. Do it by marijuana legality. <laughs> no, I can't do that because the Broncos would win. 
food? Food. Let's do it by food. Denver. What do they have? Mile high hamburgers. Mile high sandwiches. <laughs> Mount. They have mountain rocky oysters. Rocky uh, mountain oysters. That's gross. Oh, but nice. so does San Francisco. <laughs> 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 they like to eat some balls. <laughs> the, um, I've had Kobe beef for the first time in San Francisco. All right, we'll go to San Francisco. So there you go. Cool picks on the fly. Can I interrupt with a serious sports note? Yes. Right now. As we are recording this podcast, it is the top of the ninth inning with the Giants' bases loaded against the Cardinals in the Game 2 of the National League Championship Series. Two outs, tied 4-4 four to four with Pablo Sandoval up. I'm watching it on my phone. It's a game cast. It just shows me, like, immediate oh, yeah. stats. So uh, if I have a outburst here, that's why. Just a heads up. There's two outs. Two outs. Bases loaded. That's like the end of a movie right there. It's pretty much. The only thing is the Giants are on the road, which means they are they bat first. The card, No matter what happens, the Cardinals have a chance to counter. Hmm. So it's not quite the same situation, but it's pretty close. Did you say you had a game too? I did, but I didn't email it to myself. <sighs> a game? Oh, yeah. I was going to do more box art. The lady came up to really? me and said... That was hilarious. She said, uh, can I... Can I do some more of those Nintendo things? <laughs> she wanted to? Yeah. That's like a tie. And, uh, did you show her Mega Man? I one? did. I gave her a Mega Man one to see what she said. Okay, we'll see okay. that next oh, one. All right. Man, that's a teaser. Uh, jerk of the Week? I don't have a Jerk of the Week. What about you? I don't have one. All right, I, I, I guess I'll go. So, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, I went and played disc golf with Tim, Tim this morning. Uh, <laughs> another... Uh, another by the second update, Matt's text messaging me because of the Giants game, mm-hmm. Matty G. And I told him I'm not watching the game because I'm recording. <laughs> and Matt said, lame. Or, or excuse me, he said, ugh, lame. <laughs> Tell Tim I said hi. Oh, good. <laughs> That's <funny. laughs> Um, So my jerk of the week. I was, uh, oh, man, Paul will send up. I'll just ground it out. So they're going to the bottom of the ninth, tied four to four. Uh, so Tim was telling me that he was playing Killer Instinct again on the Xbox, and he's put, I think he said, 10 months into this game trying to build up stats for all the characters that are that are playable. He's got, like, a big list of achievements that he's accomplished. He, he like, makes, makes it a priority to play 30 minutes a day, minimum, and he c- tries to keep all the uh, stats even for each character, so, like, if he plays... Jago a hundred times. He wants to make sure that he plays Thunder a hundred times as well. So on and so forth. So I guess the other day, um, because the Xbox One, it'll identify you by that little camera that's on the top. I guess he was playing with one of his sister's friends or a relative or whatever. And he gave his controller to the friend. So it automatically logged him out because the, the, the Xbox realizes that this person is no longer playing. And while it logged him out, for for whatever reason, it erased his data. So when he got the controller back, he noticed it. He started playing again, and it said something like, "You know, you have zero plays with Jago or whatever." That's like, heck of funny. And he's like, "Oh, that's kind of weird. I'll just try to figure that out when I when I get done with this." So he kept playing the session, and as mm-hmm. you're playing on these new uh, systems, it has an auto save feature. So eventually, what happened was it auto saved all the erased data, and Tim was. He was obviously pissed because this was a goal that he had had uh, to, to get all his characters fully built up. And he did some research online, and I guess the creators of the game had said something like, oh yeah, we're aware of this glitch. Basically, all you have to do is not save whenever this happens. Yeah. Of course, it has the autosave <laughs> feature. <laughs> so, and he, didn't, he had no idea of the glitch because he'd never seen it before. So my jerk of the week, Microsoft Xbox. <laughs> I'm sure they'll make many appearances on this list. So, to match suggestion about there being an Xbox feature every week, there might be, but they just might be on the jerk of the week list. That's right. That's tight. All right, so that'll do it for episode 68 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.